You must be excited. I mean, Guinness are obviously, obviously celebrating all these moments we've missed with a special gig. Um, so first of all, how excited are you just to be playing to a live crowd? Do you know what I mean? As artists who are usually on the stage, this must be big news just that we can do it now. Big news that we can do it in Ireland for sure. We, we just finished the UK tour, um, yeah. which, is, which has been amazing. Um, and it kind of, so it was our first tour back. So it felt like, um, felt like the world is back and it felt like purpose was back. We were actually a real band again. We weren't just online and at home and stuff. Um, yeah. That connection with a crowd was something that we were missing so much. So to get to do that in Ireland now with our own, with our own clan will be amazing. Is it extra special, as you say, that it's in Ireland? Do you know what I mean? And this is an intimate gig. So it's, when people hear about this, they're going to go nuts because to see you guys intimately doesn't happen every day anymore. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because we've, we've never done the whole um, pub uh, circuit. Like we kind of, we were, we skipped it. Uh, we started off playing like off our shows in the academy sold out. So we kind of skipped that whole circuit. Yeah. Uh, so it's really exciting for us actually to go back um, and actually play in a pub, which is, which is, is going to be amazing, yeah. Yeah, was that kind of mad actually? Just you mentioning that, like, like, take my hand, took off so quickly that you just became this instant success. People sometimes talk about overnight success. It kind of was a little bit like that. I know you'd worked at it in the background for years, but what did that feel like to be famous overnight, to be popular overnight? Yeah, well, it was like an overnight mm-hmm. success. I know a lot of people shy away from that when people say it, but like it was for us. It was just literally, we were on national radio the day after we released a song on Facebook, like, which is just crazy. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, it just went and just hasn't stopped since. So it, it is, I guess, for us, because we were in it, it just kind of felt normal because we were just going along with it. So for people on the outside, I'm sure it looked a lot more extreme. And obviously it was an extreme kind of trajectory. But for us, it just felt like we were just going, we were just kept releasing songs and we were just loving it. So um, yeah. yeah, we're so grateful for how it happened, though, because I know people struggle for years and um, we're super grateful that we were kind of accepted right away. I know. And, and everybody's going to want tickets to, to this. So what can people expect on the night if they manage to get those lucky, do you know what I mean, Willy Wonka style tickets? You know, are we going to have greatest hits? You're going to have the new album, I assume, some tracks up there. What are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to do what we always do. You know, we're going to put on the best show possible. We're going to play as many songs as we can, we can really, as much as we can fit in, obviously, because we haven't played in Ireland in so long. Yeah. But it's going to be intimate. Um it's just going to be really, really special. You know, again, we haven't done this before. We've always wanted to do it. We've always wanted to show up kind of unannounced to a pub and just play. Yeah. And this in a way is kind of like that. So I think it'll just be a magic night. You know, this is the whole point is we're trying to get people back in the pubs, get live music back and get community back in that sense because yeah. it's, the culture needs it, you know. And it's all about these moments that we've missed. We've all had them during, during lockdown. Everybody's different in the bits they missed. What did you guys miss the most during lockdown I know you miss performing on stage but like in a did you get to see family like were you in America were you in Ireland how, how was lockdown for you yeah we, we kind of did a couple of stints in different places it was it was weird for us because we had toured literally from kind of the start of the band right up until lockdown like the, the, it was the first time where we actually stopped um, right. and we never would have stopped if it wasn't for lockdown so it was kind of it wasn't really a welcome break but it was probably a needed one yeah. um but yeah, it was it was tough just like not being able to freely do anything, which was just really weird. And um, yeah, you miss all the all the things that any anybody else missed, like actually being able to see family and friends at, at your own free will um, is really tough because you need that kind of connection with people and to be able to converse. That's super important. And it was weird kind of living through a screen. And we also released an album. Um so that was weird not being because usually when we release an album we'll do like a big launch and play shows and usually a tour coincides a worldwide tour will coincide and we weren't yeah. able to do any of that so we missed out on on so much um and that's why it's it's really important now that's why i love this campaign that they're actually celebrating those moments miss that they're not just being forgotten about everyone's able to come together now and, and celebrate them which is a really positive way of doing it which uh, which we really love yeah. And of course, at the album Life in Colour, I mean, been such a success for you. And you just before lockdown, I think you returned with the Jonas Brothers. It's part that let, let's get it. Let's get it. I think the record label is that Joe Jonas has. So you, so have you become mates with Joe? Joe? Like, how do you end up signing with uh, Joe Jonas? Is it because you got on with him so well or how did that happen? Yeah, Joe, Joe became a fan of ours randomly, uh, randomly came, pulled up outside a show we were playing in Los Angeles back in 2019, right? Yeah. He was just in traffic outside the <clears throat> outside the venue, and uh, this is a real story. Really? Uh, 
Because that sounds like one of those Hollywood stories, isn't it? You know, <laughs> it is the most Hollywood story. It wasn't Hollywood. <laughs> it wasn't Hollywood. <laughs> um, yeah, our fans were queuing up outside. We were playing the Troubadour in Los Angeles, and our fans were queuing up outside. And he pulled up and was stuck in traffic. And he just let down the window and asked the fans who's playing in there tonight. Yeah. And the fans said, uh, it's an Irish band called Picture This. And he was like, oh, Picture This, that rings a bell. And then he's like, what's one of their songs? One of the fans said, one drink. And he put it on his phone on like Spotify on uh, through his car stereo system. And he was like, oh, I know this song. I love this song. So he actually knew the song. And then he was like, oh, that's that's Picture This. Playing. They're cool. And then he kind of drove off. And we got a video sent to us from the fans. They videoed the whole interaction. And, really? Uh, yeah. The, so it, it's on. It, we have that video somewhere. Um and yeah, that, that's literally how it started. We just got talking on DM then and he invited us on tour with the Jonas Brothers and that's how the whole uh, connection started. But they're the loveliest um, guys ever and like they're superstars. So they, they don't have to be the nicest guys ever. You know what I mean? There's a lot yeah. of superstars that are superstars, um, but they're really genuine guys and, and really looked after us on, on the tour and all of that. And I can imagine you can meet all sorts of people who are famous in America and LA and everywhere. And obviously Party in LA was a huge hit from the album. So, and obviously the whole thing is about maybe you don't quite fit in there. Do you, what, do you, do you like it over there? Is it hard to judge when you're, because I was in LA a couple of times. And is it hard to judge how, how real people are? I find that was my hardest thing. Do you know what I mean? Whether people are just talking um, to you because, do you know yeah, what I mean? I do know what you mean. I, I think in a way it's actually easier to distinguish because you know, if you come, if you go over there with a bit of cop on, you can tell who's fake and you can tell who's real. And the people who are real are really, really real because they have to be, you know, they okay. have to really stand out. And then the people who are fake are really, really fake. <laughs> so especially <laughs> like Irish, you know what I mean? Going to LA, like it's, you're instantly an alien and everyone is like, doesn't know what to do with you. Yeah. Um, so we, we, we fit in with some, with some great people over there. We haven't been there in a long time now, obviously because of lockdown, but yeah. Looking forward to going back and seeing a lot of friends that we have there. Yeah. And as I say, that's just one hit off the app. Things are different, unconditional. Like this album's been brilliant. How have you found playing it? You've said you've just done the UK tour. How have you found playing it live to the fans? Has it gone down well? And are you happy with the reception? Because the album's done so well. Yeah, it's been amazing. Actually, actually, LA House Party every night on the tour was the, was the song, wasn't yeah. it? It was just it's like so good. everybody kicked off. It was crazy. <laughs> I, we just weren't expecting it or we didn't know what to expect because... It was the first time, like we said, where we released music and it wasn't the instant, right, we'll go play a show the day after it comes out. And usually you get that instant feedback and you know what songs people are really connecting to. Yeah. Um, so even picking the set list, we didn't really know what songs from the new album to put on because we were like, we don't know. We've no kind of context. Um, but songs like Winona Ryder, which came out even a long time before the album, it's on the album, but we had never got to play that live. And that was kicking off every night. And it, was just, it just felt amazing playing all those songs and we were opening the show with things are different every night and everyone was just like because of the message of that song it felt really fitting for us to to open the show with that and it kind of created this amazing sense of um the world being back together and this community in in the in the rooms and it was yeah, yeah. it was amazing we're, we're we're so grateful for the reception that that brilliant happened. and earlier this year i mean you did the late show with james corden i think you did it from crow park which is, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's just everything you do is big. So, but what was what was that 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 like? And um, going going on his show from Crow Park, because you're going to represent Ireland, but yet you're doing the American audience. Yeah, that was amazing. You know, we wanted to do something that was really stand out. You know, we like we wanted to do something that represented the time we're in as well. And the idea of an empty stadium it was kind of perfect because it just sums up kind of everything we've gone through and everyone else has gone through in terms of, you know, it's. It's it's just weird to be playing an iconic venue in that sense, and there for there to be no one there was just strange. But in a, in the same way, it was it was quite a magical experience, you know, us getting to do that. I'll, I'll never forget actually doing that. It yeah. was great, and getting to talk to James as well. He was so lovely, and you know, it just it was just a really special moment. And I think it it was it was a great timing as well for the song. Things are different, you know. The the whole message of the song was it was just a great. Um, boost I think for us and for a lot of okay. people as well uh, and what's the goal then I mean you guys have achieved so much so quickly what's what's the goal then do you have do you have a map out of your career do you know what I mean we want to do this and do this many Grammys or do you take it a day at a time kind of a bit of both we always have goals of course um, I think you need them in, in our industry if you really want to to get to the heights that, that we want to to get to but I think the most important thing is just getting our music to as many people um, because that's the kind of music we create and it was really kind of um, we were really made aware of it on this tour just being back and how every single person sings every single word of every song it was just intense and it was just like 
this is the greatest feeling on the planet so the more people we can do this with is yeah. th that's yeah. the goal because it's that kind of personal experience with people that's that's what really that's what we love more than anything of course you'd love to get grammys and, and all of that but you know they just end up on on, on a shelf but the experience that you have with people that that lives with you forever and yeah. that's our, our favorite part so yeah just play perform and have as many people hear our music as as possible kind of is the goal really and just and enjoy it yeah and, and this campaign with guinness makes so, so much sense because so many people are looking forward just to going out and having a few pints with their friends so for you guys who would you love who'd be your dream person to sit down and have a pint with and can you do it anywhere now because i surely i know our ireland we're, we're famous for not annoying celebrities when they go out for a drink or whatever but do, do people still come up and get try and get that selfie or whatever yeah it happens but everyone's always very nice we've never had any um that's the thing because people always say oh it must be really annoying or whatever and it's like you can only ever be grateful for somebody coming up and appreciating your art and everybody's always super nice we've never come across anybody who's been any sort of negative uh, way towards us so you know it's it's part of being in a, in a band and being considered famous or a celebrity or whatever you want to call it um, yeah but irish people are just so nice in general yeah. and they have a real ownership over us which is really nice and and, and, and we love that um yeah who would we sit down and have a point I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd love to have a point with Killian murphy Oh, oh that's, a, that's a good one. Apparently, he yeah. was down in the local um, Avoca the other day, actually. There you go. Oh, really? I, keep, I keep going down and going to scope him out because I love Killian Murphy. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to have a point with Liam Gallagher. Liam Gallagher. Good yeah. one. A, a, good, a good one, too. So, so um, yeah. come here. The whole campaign, it's hashtag here's to it all. If you fancy going along to that gig, um, it's going to be this month. Uh, we don't know where yet, but it's going to be an intimate gig with picture this. You just have to hashtag here's to it all um, with your missed moments, your favorite missed moments. Maybe it's a picture or something. Maybe it's whatever. Tickets are going to be dished out. And oh, my God, they're going to be like gold dust. Lads, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, look forward to Malahide, <coughs> excuse me, Malahide Castle. Are you looking forward to that as well, by the way, before you go? Yeah, can't wait. That's been put off for two years now, so there's so much anticipation. We can't wait to play that show. Brilliant. Guys, congratulations on everything, on the album and everything. And um, yeah, well, I won't be seeing you there, but people who are lucky with a lot of, a lot of tickets, as it were, will be seeing you at the gig. Take care of yourselves. Right. Nice Thanks so much. Thanks, Sean. See you later.